The plight of black America is truly a story of triumph, a hope and sense of community, even during the most troubling, darkest times in the complex, unequivocal history of black America was astonishing. If it were bottled and sold, the seller's wealth would be unlike any others. A curtain of cotton rang down on some four million human beings. It became a crime to teach these men and women to read and write. It became a crime to give them a Bible. Behind the cotton curtain, four million human beings were systematically deprived of every right of personality. Vice immorality and brutality were institutionalized. The sanctity of family was violated. Children were sold and mothers and fatherhood in effect was outlawed. The rape of a slave woman, a Mississippi court ruled, is an offense unknown to common or civil law. The father of a slave, a Kentucky court ruled, is unknown to our law. For the slaves in the most astonishingly creative act in our history, transcended their environment, creating a new structure of meaning and putting their oppressors and the world in their debt. No one can read the record of that transcendence without a sense of awe at the audacity of the slave's hope. For a slave, the marriage she and her mate consummated was thus a love match in the true sense of the word. It was customary until recently to suggest that slave men and women lived a life of riotous debauchery. But a pathfinding study by Professor Herbert G. Gutman, The Black Family in Slavery and Freedom, destroyed that myth by giving us an understanding of the slave community and the black family. One, most slaves lived in family units headed by a father and mother, and large numbers of slaves lived in long marriages, some of 30 or more years. Here's number two. Fathers were strong and respected members of the family circle, and male children were often named for their fathers. Here's my observation again. Today, society paint black women as defiant, needing nothing and no one, mainly the black father of her black child. Number three, premarital sex was fairly common. Although the slave community expected a premarital pregnancy to be followed by marriage, the slave community was more open and more honest about sex, but it did not approve or condone indiscriminate mating and begatting. More than that, the slave community expected males and females to remain faithful after marriage. Here's my observation again. Now it's expected for black mothers to be anything but married to the father of their child. Sex outside of marriage and black women seem to be disturbingly proud of being loose and fancy free, AKA lacking any signs of moral or self-respect. Learning about our people high standards during those wicked times, one wonders how we became so far removed from superior values and who had a hand in helping us praise debauchery. One doesn't have to wonder too long. Look at who's behind movies, TV shows, and music. You'll get your answer to my previous question. Our ancestors had an innate sense of community. Contrary to the spoken misconception of black America, we as a whole still share a bond, community, and awareness. Regardless of space, time, or plantation, the community was there. You know that feeling you have when you're surrounded by people who look like you and you're feeling you're freely congregating with them? It's a feeling of comfort, unity, and an understanding that you know no other group has. That is the innate sense of the community that our people felt 
that derived from the plantation but was not confined to any plantation. There was once a place called Slave Row. In that place is where the spiritual connection between every slave was allowed to be displayed, embraced, and commended. Hope was visible within this community that started in the family and radiated in larger and larger circles that enveloped the whole of Slave Row. Although the slave community was located in Slave Row, the prototype of the Harlems and South Side of today, it was not defined by geography of any one Slave Row. Like the invisible church of slavery, the community was everywhere and nowhere which inhabited the slave and moved with him through time and space. Unwittingly and with the worst of motives, slave owners furthered and deepened this reality by selling and shipping slaves from one slave row to another, from one state or region to another, because the bridges of the slave community were stronger than any chasm of plantation society, all slaves, house and field, artesian and laborer participated in this reality. The bridges were based on the strongest of all human needs, the imperative need for a home place for the heart. No matter how many airs the house slave might put on, they knew and their slave masters knew that the only real home they had on the plantation was in the quarters where they could drop their mask and stretch out their legs and soles. House servants and field hand might meet there, the author of the Negro in Virginia wrote. The testimony of the living ex-slave does not support the tradition of animosity between the two. House servants would regale other members of the row, some of whom had never set foot in the big house. Tales our master and missus would take them off in speech and gesture so faithful that less privilege would shake with laughter. The words less privilege are questionable. In view of the fact already noted, that many slaves didn't consider it a privilege to work in the house. It appears from this quotation and from contemporary views of slaves and slave owners that many house slaves realized the limitations of their alleged privileges. The evidence of this chiefly in the fact that house slaves ran away and attacked their slave masters directly with blows and indirectly with poison or fire. Some, if not most Americans, use the term house slaves as a derogatory way of implying that someone is eagerly awaiting to do their oppressor's bidding. The stigma attached to house slaves is one that was probably derived from dramatization purposes or to create constant confusion among the prisoners of torture. House slaves, even though their work may have been lighter, they perform various services inside the house. Please stay tuned for the next installment of Unlike Any Other Community, Part 2. I will upload it in a few clicks. Until then, enjoy your day. Thank you so much for the support.